Hello, today we're going to be playing Cavern of Sudiu. Um, it's a post-game dungeon where you play as a Kokatsu Shiren instead of regular Shiren, like the human form. So it should be hopefully a little interesting. This dungeon doesn't allow um, bringing items, so we're going to be starting with an empty inventory. So this is the scene where Kokatsu fuses with Shiren and turns into like a some sort of dog looking thing. It's kind of like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, actually, because um, in this form you have four abilities that you can use, and kind of like moves in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. But um, I'll explain like once we're actually inside the dungeon. Okay, so in this dungeon, while you're playing as Kokatsu Shiren, you can't equip weapons, shields, bracelets, or use arrows or rocks. Um, so you have to use other items and your abilities. And your normal attack is a flame attack, and it initially reaches one tile ahead, but as you defeat enemies without taking damage, it increases in range. So now that we defeated one enemy, you can see that there's a flame above um, Kokatsu Shiren's head. That means we have one extra tile range. And since we received damage, um, that indicator went away and our range is back to one tile. So that's how that works. And the max reach is three tiles ahead. So when there are two indicators above your head, that's the furthest the normal attack range increases. So um, now I'll talk about the abilities a little bit. If you press the Z L button, um, it brings up a shortcut menu in the bottom left for abilities you can select. And the first one is sand handling. Um, it creates basically a sand pillar in front of you. And if the tile in front of you is a wall tile, it digs out the wall tile instead. Um, so you can use it, like, say, at, on a room entrance tile. 
if I were to use it here, um, it would block off the room. And deception is kind of like disguising staff, but it creates a clone that distracts enemies for a little while. And I think it has somewhere around 60 HP. Um, Blazing Heat is a room-wide area attack. Um, it hits all monsters in the room and deals 40 to 50 damage and also inflicts blind status. Um, it's pretty powerful but also pretty expensive because it costs 60 fullness to use it. And Sun's Blessing is kind of like a one item presto pot or like transmutation pot. Um, if you select Sun's Blessing and then select an item, it transforms that item into either an onigiri or grass item. So if I were to select this Cursed Giton for example, it turned into a special onigiri that time. So, <clears throat> um, the strategy I like to use for this dungeon is to basically use uh, Sun's Blessing to stock up on like lots of useful items and food. Um, but at the very start, like you can kind of run out of onigiri to make use of it if you're unlucky with uh, what the items transform into. So in that case, you might have to restart the dungeon. Um, but after a few attempts, it usually works out. So I think instead of identifying any of this stuff, um, I'm going to keep going for now to the next floor. Shrine. Revival Grass or Strength, those are both good, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. And uh, one thing about this dungeon is that um, rotting traps are pretty common, so you want to check for traps. Um, it's, it's tedious, but it really helps for consistency. Oh yeah, and there are curse traps too. Zebra scrolls. We could check what that is by using it. Since we can't equip weapons or shields, um, even if they're a good item, just turn them into food or grass using Sun's Blessing. And I think I'll go ahead and try using a special Onigiri. Max Strength. I was hoping for the... Um, knowledgeable status, which lets us identify items just by picking them up. Ooh, 
There's another special onigiri, so if we use it again, we might get it. Satiated status. So I think that means we won't feel hunger on this floor. This is. Nothing seems to have happened. Could be an ordinary pot or synthesis pot, maybe. Monkey scroll into an item to and start identifying some grasses. Revival. I do want to keep most of the other items, so I think in this case, how much food do we have? A decent amount. Let's go with Revival Grass. We got to check for um, traps. Revival grass is pretty good. And even more food. Yeah. 
That's the stuff that we found. Oh, peach stuff. That's pretty nice. I just realized I have the stream um, display set to off. Live display. I think I'll try type 1 this time. There's a lot of empty space, but you can see the inventory. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, we have plenty of food. We just need some items to transform. Sky blue is new, so we could eat that. Oh, fortune. Grasses. Strength grass, okay. Um. All of our items are pretty good right now. Gazers are a little tough. So 
it would be nice to reach level 10 for faster HP regen. I think we'll go ahead and turn this pot into an item too. Don't need sedating. Fortune is good. The sixth floor is the um, pretty important floor, so I'm trying to conserve fullness a little bit instead of lingering. And we'll see why once I get there. Oh, a shop. I don't remember what a 60 grass is. You can check the item notes, maybe. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be listed, so maybe it's a cursed. 70 grass or something. And we can't equip bracelets, so no point in checking those. One ED would be nice. I guess we could sell one special onigiri so we can buy some items. That's antidote. Oops. Yeah, there's only one price or one grass in that price point, which is antidote grass, so I can go ahead and label that. And then recycle it. Hmm. Might be old. Yeah, Otogiri Saw is 80 buying, 30 selling, so I think it's an Otogiri Saw. scroll. It's a 300 scroll, so it could be useful, but I kind of want to keep identifying grasses for now. Three fortune should be plenty. Hmm. 
Disguising stuff. Disguising stuff would be kind of nice. Okay, should be good enough. Another peach staff. Let's try reading this. I don't think I'm too interested in a selection based scroll, so I'll just convert it into an item. Okay. useful. Let's eat the seawill grass. We almost have too much food now. Can eat the special onigiri. What is this? Pear stuff? First, we need to do a little preparation. Let's 
Let's use a mapping scroll. use hand handling to seal off the room. get our attack and defense lowered a few times. One more time maybe. The idea is to create a high level mudkin similar to my serp uh, Serpent Coil Island part 1 video. Um, Once there are um, a lot of high-level mudkins in the room, we can use the Blazing Heat ability to wipe them all out. a little bit, but if we can get it set up, it's very effective for leveling up early. usually can clear the dungeon, like finish the boss fight and everything at around level 25 to 27 I think, so it's not like you need to do it excessively, but um, if the opportunity comes up, like it's good to at least reach level 20, I think, 
for faster HP regen. We're at the limit yet, and our character limit. Um, but maybe we are, because they're not duplicating very much. Good enough. I think I'll go ahead and use Blazing Heat, and there is a chance this could backfire, um, so it's good to have, like, Invincible Grass. Just in case. Twenty-five is pretty good, but it would be nice to get a little more. Um, didn't work out quite as well as I thought it would. Level-wise, this is probably good enough. So I'll save the rest of the Onigiri for the next type of farming. 
Let's see what Crimson is. Belly expand. We still have some time, so... We can get started on the second type of farming, which is using a ghost radish bun to create lots of poison grass. And this um, basically just is one way to ensure we have plenty of items for our son's blessing. go too crazy with it, but... Just showing what it can do, basically. It's one way to stock up on useful grasses like Revival and Sea Well. As long as you keep getting Onigiri, um, you can keep this up for as long as like you have time left before the wind blows. So you can increase max HP strength and stock up on items for the boss. Since you can't um, use equipment in this dungeon, like this is basically the main way to upgrade Shiren. Thank <laughs> you. 
Can just eat this fortune grass now. status so we can check the curses. grass. We already have two of them, so we don't exactly need more, but sure, why not? Okay, that's the third wind, so we need to um, get moving now. We already have power up. Probably don't need more than one. Be a warehouse plot. Oh well. What level up? Oh, a Fragucci. Not a big deal.
I guess we can do some more poison grass farming. We probably don't need to at this point, but just to kind of drive the point home even further. Just kind of a tedious, like repetit uh, repetitive task, but it is very effective. Yeah, sitting pretty, pretty nice now, so 
I'll just keep going. And probably rush and tell the boss now. I forgot to turn on the do not disturb on my phone again. <laughs> so that was my phone. You really don't need any more stats, but it's just kind of fun to see them go as high as they can, I guess. I already have two peach stabs, so that's not needed. Mapping can be pretty nice.
It's a little unfortunate, but not too big of a deal still. Mostly unfortunate in the sense of um, the what do you call it? Um, large onigiri became grilled onigiri, so it doesn't replenish as much fullness. We're not really utilizing abilities with our current stats anyway, so... Yeah, the dungeon is, I don't know, like, kind of flowcharty, because all you do is, um, do the sun's blessing stuff, and if that goes well, then there really isn't a whole lot to say at that point, because you have high stats, like, high max HP and strength. should still check for traps though, instead of getting lazy. I don't even need to find out. I wish I had a fortune grasser too, because we could try for a ultra gazer. grass. Oops. Oh, my God. 
Well, it was worth a try. I don't want to use up all my food though, so I'll save the rest. Because, um, if we can hunt a Ultra Gazer, that would let us one-shot the boss. Because Ultra Gazer always drops 3000 Gitan when you defeat it. Oh, there's another fortune. Just need that hyper gazer to come here now. Okay. He's one of our invincible grass, so he can't hypnotize us. So we have another one. I'll try for the other one too. Actually, maybe not with muddies around. A little anticlimactic, but we're at the boss now. So this fight um, starts with a bunch of aquatic types uh, on the field along with the boss itself and if you um, don't like either confuse them or blind them like the kappas will 
head toward items and start throwing them at you, which can be a little problematic sometimes. But if you have a confusion scroll, like that's one way to deal with it, but if not, you can also just use blazing heat to blind everyone in the room. And then once everyone's blinded, like you'll still be lined up with the boss. So if you have a 3000 value Giton bag, um, you could just throw that to instantly defeat the boss. <laughs> and yeah, that's how that dungeon goes. But um, if you don't cheese the boss with like high value Gitan, um, it can get a little complicated because she does things like uh, soaks your inventory so that you can't use scrolls, and the terrain of the field can change depending on like a torrential rain that she does and stuff like some other actions like that. But overall, like if you have invincible grass and power up grass or swift grass, like items like that, and some extra onigiri to replenish fullness so you can keep using blazing heat, um, it's really not bad. I'd say it's probably the easiest boss fight in the game. So yeah. Not a whole lot to that dungeon, other than like start by using Sun's Blessing and if you get enough food to continue using it, like you can just um, use that until you've gained a lot of st like high stats and stuff and can power through most of the enemies without any trouble. And Peach Staff, like if you find a Peach Staff, use it on a Ghost Radish and then convert more poison grass into other items. Um, that's basically all there is to it if you want to clear it like in one try. And I think this is the end of the I guess what you'd call main, like, post-game story arc that involves the, um, island and these two, like, deities or whatever. So... From the next, um, video, we're just gonna go in order of the dungeon unlocks, so... Um, this is the Golden Highway. It's not actually like a separate dungeon from Serpent Coil Island, but I just haven't unlocked it yet. But I think the next one is either Yami Kagashi Pass or something like that. I forgot the exact name. Um, and either that or Kiki Island, maybe. So. It's going to be one of the harder dungeons in the game, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys next time, and thanks for watching. <laughs>